tough business. Oh, man. I tell you who's not a loser, who who aren't losers. Okay. Uh, which is uh, the, the fine Italian people of St. Louis, which brings us to hey. our next uh, topic of uh, – of the night. Uh, Booster, take it away. What's the next topic? Uh, that would be America's Last Little Italy, The Hill. Yes. Uh, which is a documentary that it has already come out if you want to go watch it. Uh, it is about all is all about the last bastion American neighborhood that is strictly authentic Italian-American. Absolutely. The Hill in St. Louis. The Hill. So, just like how soccer has deep roots in St. Louis, uh, so does the Italian community here. Okay. And uh, the Hill neighborhood in St. Louis, or as the Italians call it, La Montagna, is actually the last Little Italy in the country. Now, the Little Italy neighborhood in New York, which is probably the most famous one, is virtually gone. It have it's, to be the famous one. Oh, Why yeah, is yeah. that already gone? You can't well, tell it, me that's, so, that's gone. No, so it's still, it's still hanging on, but what it is, it's just a strip. It used to cover so many blocks, and now it's just a row of shops and restaurants. Um, there is no neighborhood there. It's just a row of Italian shops and restaurants. Actually, it's become a Chinatown. All the all the houses and stuff like that. More Asian people live there than uh, than any Italians. So what uh, you mean is we're we're mixing into the Italian community right there? No, no, no. Like most Italians have moved out. Oh, they okay. they still have like some businesses there, and it's just a row of shops and uh, and and restaurants basically. In, in Little Italy, and that's that's about it. Uh, they're all, they're virtually gone. Uh, Chicago's Little Italy has been gone for a while. You have Italian, quote unquote. You have neighborhoods that are somewhat Italian, you know, mostly uh, in Chicago, but they're Little Italy. They have like no identity. They can't say, yeah, this neighborhood is ours. Uh, and actually, uh, you, you're saying this, and all I'm saying is this got to be a good thing then. It's just Why? saying it's saying like, hey, it's like it's not a little area where Italians want to just stay around Italians. It's like, all right, we're moving out. We're spreading. We're intermingling. We still have mm-hmm. our restaurants that we can go to. Yeah. But it's not like a space where no, because, this is only Italians no, and only Italians not, are. Being no, it's not. It's not a thing about only Italians. But when everybody mm-hmm. starts moving away and they do not have a neighborhood that is theirs and they don't have a central location, you lose the ethnicity. So yeah, you can move you can move away, but the eth- the ethnicity is no longer preserved. The traditions are no longer preserved. And that little spot is what you're trying to say. That like little spot, yeah. it is okay. That little spot, and so the the hill is the only Italian community left standing. Uh, that, that is still a community. It's not just a row of Italian shops and restaurants. This is an actual neighborhood with residents of Italian ethnicity still living there and St. Ambrose Church being the center of the community. A lot of these places, they don't have a church. And, and really, if you're religious or not, a church within a community acts as such a a nucleus for everybody and everybody revolves around it. And uh, St. Ambrose Church... You know, being being there and still still standing and still having a, a great congregation um, is really what's what's doing well for that neighborhood. So this documentary explores the deep historic roots of the Italian neighborhood, the Hill in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, it chronicles the advent of Italians immigrating in search of the American dream and building a little Italy that still flourishes to this day, all the while maintaining its ethnic identity. So guys, uh, we actually have uh, the trailer for the movie and uh, we're going to play it here. Uh, tell us what you think. Hit it, Booster. It, for some reason, there was a fear of going into this Italian community. And, you know, we were kind of happy that there was a fear also. The Hill is St. Louis's Little Italy. Why did the immigrants come? Poverty. Suppression. People on the Hill originally came from Italy. They had nothing. The Italians, they were faced with a lot of prejudice. You go places and you're Italian, you what? Like they resented us. To them it was a marathon, it wasn't a sprint. It was a life that they created. This place probably doubled the number of homes. Let me tell you something, on Sunday, there wasn't a better smelling neighborhood than the hill. All the moms being there cooking. Everyone's grandmother lived with them. You kidding me? Everything to make you happy and to make your life wonderful was here in the neighborhood. There was a feeling in the United States, you know, that 
American cities were kind of doomed. Other neighborhoods all to the east of the hill uh, just fell completely apart. It was a war zone, battle zone. This was a big deal that the hill was going to be divided. Across America, little Italy's were dying. This is a fight worth fighting. It's a neighborhood. Neighborhoods don't seem to exist anymore. Look at little Italy's gone in New York. And now it's Chinatown. We have 52 square blocks. We have residents and we have businesses side by side. You know, we are the last real Italian neighborhood in the whole United States. You understand English? That's enough. Yeah, so there you go. That was the trailer for America's Last Little Italy, The Hill. Um, it was directed by Joey Puleo. Uh, I actually watched the documentary this morning. Oh, yeah, how was and it? It was, it was really, really good. Okay. It was really good. They basically go from its inception, and they go they go on until now, and how they, they've had so many times that they thought people were just going to start moving out. And that and that the, the the neighborhood would die and that the culture would go away, and uh, yeah, but it, it was it was really cool to see in the video, young people in the movie um, saying we're here to stay, we're we're here we're here to stay we're not going anywhere. So, oh, we got a caller. All right, you are live on Underground STL. Who are we speaking with? This is uh, Joe Paleo. Hey Joe, you, you directed the uh, the movie, right? Oh, all that's right. correct. Yeah, awesome, man. How you been? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Uh, so so Joe, tell me how you got uh into this uh directing this movie. How what what made you actually want to start this project? So I um was I'm an Italian American myself. Um, our executive producer Rio Vitali. Uh, actually came to me with the idea of um, directing myself, directing a documentary on the Hill neighborhood. Uh, and obviously I was interested in this subject matter and thought that I could, you know, bring something to this project. And that's how, that's how all of this came about. Right. Uh, you, you know, so did you grow up on the Hill? You're an Italian American. I didn't. Did you grow up on the Hill? Yes, I I did not grow up on the hill, but I did have uh, multiple family members that lived on the hill. So I was always down there visiting. And, uh, you know, just a, as an Italian-American, every time you go down there, there's a, there's a feeling of that pride. And, um, you know, but, but one of the biggest things was I didn't really know the background or the history mm -hmm. of the neighborhood, aside from the fact that there was just a lot of Italian people that lived there. I didn't know you know, the, the background of all of this. And it was something that, that interested me in, in learning that and, and sharing that with other people, because, you know, being from St. Louis, when you hear the Hill, the first thing that comes to your mind is the Italian restaurants. Right. Um, Speaking of know, which, I, Joey, I, I, I wanna, got a, I I got a go quick question for that. you. I got a quick question for you, Joey. Who uh, invented toaster ravioli officially? So that's actually something that we don't get into in the film, but oh. we did. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> we did. Um, we did interview uh, people that claim to have been there when it when it was invented. Mm. Uh, the main reason that this wasn't in the film is it's a very confusing story because okay. the restaurants that are laying claim to inventing toasted ravioli are actually, they just are in the building that it was uh, invented, invented in. Yeah, wasn't, so, it, wasn't it Old so Danny's? Like, and, yeah, there's like yeah. Old Danny's, and then I think, uh, and then there's Mama Campisi's lace claims, Charlie Gito's lace claims, and so it was just, you know, and after doing all of these interviews and, and going through all of it, just kind of made the decision that this was going to be it was going to take too much time to get into it. You know, we, we set out to make something, you know, uh, right around an hour, an hour 10, which is, yeah. which is where the film ended up at, a, at an hour 10. And, you know, this was, this was something very intricate that, uh, that we would get into, but 
yeah, maybe maybe down the line we'll we'll tell that story, but for, <laughs> well, for this, this documentary, we did. Everybody was, needs to know. It was a great. It was a great. <laughs> it was a great documentary, Joey. Uh, it it was it was great. I mean, I watched it today, um, after talking to you, and yeah. it it was it was so it was so inspiring actually because I mean these people really stayed together, and there were so many they had so many opportunities that they could have just left. But they said no. One hundred percent. This is our this is our culture. This is our community. We're staying. We're here. To, we're here to stay. And most of the houses are passed down. They've been passed down through the generations, you know, to to children and uh, you know to other family members. Um, mm -hmm. Why Why do you think what What do you think was is the one thing why people don't leave that area? Well, I think everything mainly goes back to. Um, Father Polizzi, uh during during the sixties and seventies, in a time where this is this is this is the time where Little Italy started to go under, and Polizzi really witnessed that. He Father Polizzi was the an associate pastor at St Ambrose, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and he, he came in he came in during the sixties uh, to the neighborhood, and you know he was a young energetic uh, priest, and he really saw what was going on across <laughs> the country. And, and wanted to, you know, protect the hill from uh, from going under like like these other um, like these other neighborhoods. So, you know, starting a neighborhood organization where, you know, they started buying property and and, and fixing it up. And yeah. you know, the the main thing about the hill was, you know, having pride. The the pride build was the motto, and that's that's something that you still see today when you go and go onto the hill with the well manicured lawns. Oh and yeah. Well, everything is and everything's you, put together and you guys had this in the in the movie. Uh actually they were yeah. talking about they, they interviewed some older Italians and said that uh Mons Monsignor Polizzi would go around and would <laughs> tell them, Hey, your grass is looking a little too long. You might want to cut it. Take some pride in in the neighborhood. And then they would show up to confession and they'd confess their sins, and he'd be like, "Hold on, before you go, I know you did three more things. Would you like to confess <laughs> those as well?" So yeah, he really. Uh, I, I knew that he was a, a, a huge beacon um, in in neighborhood. I did not know the extent of it, even after I, uh, you know, talked about you know the I forty four overpass yeah. that that he so. Uh, that he went to the federal government. He actually went to the president uh, to get that overpass mm -hmm. put in so the neighborhood wasn't completely divided. Um, I, I still did not know until watching this documentary like how deep his influence went in in that neighborhood. It's yeah, if not for those actions, I, I don't think that, that we're having this conversation right now um, and talking about the fact that this neighborhood still exists. And I think all of that, you know, mm -hmm. getting getting to the residents passing the houses down through the generations you know as we get into it in the film a lot of these homes were were built by their great grandparents you know these people yeah. these italians built their own shotgun house on the hill and you know that they, they're coming from a place in italy where they they didn't have the means to own property or any of these things so you know it's something they're incredibly proud of and and uh passing those uh, houses through the generations, you know, that's, that's that along with Polizia are, are probably the two main reasons I would say that, that this neighborhood still exists as opposed to these other little Italy's that, you know, they, they just went over and they, they went under and, you know, there's, yeah. there's varying, there's varying, uh, you know, reasons why in these other neighborhoods. And, you know, we kind of, touch upon that a little bit but you know the focus is always on the hill what they did and, and how they were able to maintain yeah and you and you know with mm -hmm. with me i'm i'm half sicilian i did not grow up on the hill i grew up in st louis but with right. with me like anytime i went down to the hill even though that was not my neighborhood it was so cool as a kid going down there you see people that look like you and you get a sense of culture then and i think the problem with many americans nowadays is there's no culture there's no roots um I, a lot of them a lot of them don't know their roots a lot of them don't know their history mm -hmm. why are we here mm -hmm. and the hill it when you go down there it's mapped out for you it says this is mm -hmm. where we came from and this is where we're going you know this is and and i think even even people that aren't italian go down there and they enjoy the hill so much and they love eating there and they love uh you know you know just hanging out there 
uh, because it, you're surrounded by culture, which is a rare thing nowadays in American neighborhoods. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an immigrant story, and that's you know, at this time, you know, I think that this is a this is this is a necessary thing for a lot of people to see. You know, the the positives that that came from this, and you know, uh, I just think that it's a, it's an important uh, thing to you know, especially during these times to see, you know, the, the positive that we're able to come from this neighborhood. Yeah. What, what's, what's funny. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this one last thing, uh, on the, uh, on the documentary because I'm, I don't want to give too much, too much away yeah, for people that are the secrets. Yeah. 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 Tell us the but, uh, ending, the middle, they, and the credits. Of they that talked name. about in the, uh, in the sixties or seventies, the Shaw neighborhood, which was right next, next door. Basically it was, it was the neighborhood over, mm-hmm. yeah. um, had what, what the biggest crime rate in St. Louis at one point in time. And it was literally right next door to the hill, but the hill remained untouched because the people all knew one another. They all looked out for one another, and they took pride in their community um, to make sure nothing like that happened. Yeah, I mean, you hear one of the uh, one of the people that we interviewed in the in the film was talking, and uh, he had said something along the lines of, "If if they saw you doing something in the neighborhood." you you were probably going to hear about it. And I think it was that, you know, self-policing of each other. Like, I, I think that it was, you know, their their way of keeping their neighborhood, um, keeping it strong, making sure that everybody in the neighborhood, you know, had pride and, yeah. and was keeping everything clean and, and all of these things. And, you know, it's like that, that stuff wasn't going to fly on the hill, you know, they, Right. If, if that was, they held each other they accountable. They just work in a one hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I think, I think many Americans can actually learn from this example. You know, just take pride in your community, take pride in your neighborhood, walk outside, get to know your neighbor. Um, yeah, just, I, and I, I don't, I think this is something that, you know, in this day and age, we just, we just don't have anymore. Um, but yeah, it, it's so it's so great. I love just driving th- through there. I know Booster works at Volpe. Um, I do, and I go. How many times have I been since you started working there? How many times have I gone to see you, Booster, and had a and I had a sandwich just to uh, say hi? We make incredible sandwiches. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> when do you guys do this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> whoops. Ah, got, all right. During cool. business well, hours. Well, you see, now I've moved to the hill myself now. So you, now you are I'm, the hill. Hey, you are the hill. hill. Now, hey. now I'm in this culture. So I'm yes. trying to see this culture. Hey, Maybe absolutely. I can get a, hey, Therese, get a taste doing? of this. You know hey, what I mean? You you get a taste buddy. of these anyway, meatballs, if Joey, you know what I'm saying. Joey, Joey, <laughs> thank, right. thanks, man, for calling in. Uh, you you did an awesome job on this documentary. Quick, where can, where can people actually uh, go to watch it if they want to? Yeah, so the film right now is currently, uh, we're making the festival, uh, we're in the midst of our festival run. Uh, this is a very, uh, you know, uncertain time with the COVID and festival. So there have not, we have not actually had an in-person festival. They've all, they've all been streaming at this point. Um, so we're, we actually, we went to the uh, St. Louis Filmmaker Showcase um, where we premiered. That was in mid-July. We won the audience award there for best documentary. Uh, we're showing in New Haven uh, this week, and then uh, the film was accepted into the St. Louis International Festival, uh, which will be streaming uh, this November, early November. Um, we're also in. Uh, we're also right now uh, in the process of getting DVDs made. A lot of a lot of people have been after us trying to get a physical copy of the film. Um, you know, this is all. This is this is a lot earlier than we expected any of the any of this stuff to be happening in terms gotcha. of, of DVDs and and you know finishing the uh, finishing the festival run up probably in November uh, beca- because of Corona. But yeah, if if anybody uh, is interested, they go to our Facebook page, uh, America's Last Little Italy of the Hill, or facebookcom slash the Hill Doc. They can find all of the where we're going to be screening uh, moving forward uh, in terms of festivals. Um, and also we'll have the DVDs available and they can, they can get that through the Facebook and, you know, so just, just keep an eye out and, and, uh, hopefully everybody will be able to watch this film. Awesome. Well, all right. right. Arrivederci Paisano. Grazie mille. Good job. (laughs) Take it easy. Take care, man. Have a good one. Thanks for calling. (laughs) Bye.
So yeah, no, he's just he's just a good guy. Uh, we t- we talked today. Um, he actually went to w- went to school with one of my really good friends growing up. Uh, but yeah, man, the the Hill documentary guys, you gotta you gotta tune in, you gotta watch it. We have some people in the comments. Let's we go. have uh, David Amalotti says, man, just. That makes me miss home so badly. Uh, an Italian from St. Louis who is living in Iowa. We have Rio Vitali saying it's about preserving culture and heritage and the difficulties with keeping it going in, the, in today's melting pot and changing environment. Um, on YouTube, we have uh, Lori saying, I love the hill. My dad and his family from the old country lived on the hill. I would love to see that documentary. Um, mm-hmm. Sam says on YouTube, at one time, all real estate purchases had to go through through the church first. He also said, um, how do they keep it so clean? Somebody's legs would get broken. Just saying. A little mob joke there. Uh, yes. Uh, we also have uh, we also have David saying, I love this conversation about pride in the area. I love how it's kept a time capsule. Uh, it just seems uh, like time is slow slows down a little bit when you're on the hill. That is absolutely true. It is a it is I a agree. great neighborhood. Agree, it is yeah, a great exactly. staple of St. Louis. It's St. Louis. It's St. Louis, but it's St. Louis's little Italy. You know, and, and you know, uh, you don't feel transported, but no. you do feel altered. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. I like I like this. Right. I like this. Mm. You know, um, is there deep? I like this description go. of it you being a time capsule. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Tyrese, maybe we'll go down there and get somebody to eat this uh, weekend. What do you say? I mean, I'm I'm there. So all I gotta Good. do is just walk. You man. Just I'm walk. in there. I'm part of the culture. I'm That's here true. Already. All right.